Oh, is this the crash video from second year? <gasps> hey, welcome back to the channel. I recently got a request from Carl to talk about my time at the National Circus School of Montreal, and I know a lot of you are curious about that, so I decided to make a really in-depth video talking about my time there. I'm going to go over the different circus schools around the world that I've seen, I'm going to show you some footage from inside the school, and finally I'm going to bust out a class schedule so you can really see class by class what to expect if you're thinking about applying to a circus school, or if you're just curious as to what that would be like. Ready? Let's go. Okay, real quick to let you know where I was at before I got into ENC. When I was younger, I grew up juggling, and in high school, I did Circus Smirkus, which is a nonprofit helping other nonprofits. If you're a little bit younger, that might be the right thing for you. Check them out. From there, I graduated and got accepted into McGill University for business. Basically, I chose McGill because it had a good reputation, but I also knew Montreal was a circus hub, so I was still interested in it. If you're interested in the juggling level I had when I auditioned for the school, you can check out Cigar Boxes 1 through 3. I'll put the link to that video in the description so you can see how good I was when I first got into school. Let me know in the comments below if you're interested in the process of auditioning for a circus school, and I'll try to make another video about that. Okay, before I get into a class schedule at ENC, I want to tell those of you who are like me or like Harry Potter in Book 4 who had never heard of other wizarding schools or other circus schools that there are a lot of circus schools out there. And some of them might be a better fit for you. So I'm going to put two minutes on the clock and I'm going to give you a quick rundown of some of the circus schools around the world. Here we go. Okay, starting farthest from Montreal and moving closer. First up, there's Nika in Australia. I've uh, actually never been there, but it looks pretty wacky. So if you're from that region, check that out. In Kiev, in the Ukraine, maybe you've heard of this guy, Koblikov. He came out of their school, and they also have a great reputation for hand balancers. Moving over to France, there's a lot of schools, but uh, the one in Paris is Fratellini, and I have fond memories for that because I caught my first ever triple pirouette there. Just north of there in London is the National Center for the Circus Arts. Hey look, it's Tom Gaskin juggling boxes. Uh, Bromance and Nathan and Isis came out of there and that building is absolutely beautiful. Then of course, ESAC in Brussels has a great reputation. Half of the group back pocket came from there. I actually visited while I was at circus school and had a great time. And they recently redid their building and it is absolutely gorgeous. So make sure you check them out. Moving north, you've got Doc in Stockholm. In Sweden! I don't know what they're putting in the water up there, but it's working. All right, jumping across the pond. In Philadelphia, we have Circadium. I've trained at their space and it is gorgeous for those of you that want to stay in North America. Another good option is NECA over in Vermont. Uh, they also just redid their building. A lot of people are redoing their buildings. That rocks. Lovely space and a lovely setting. I'm actually from Vermont, so I've got a place in my heart for it. Check them out. Moving up to Quebec City, you have the Quebec Circus School, which is in a renovated church. So that is just awesome. They've got a ton of space and a really good reputation. A lot of great circus artists have come out of there. And for those of you that know Turbo Fest or have heard of it, it's one of my favorite juggling festivals and worth going just to see that festival. The point of showing you all this is that there are great circus schools that have produced great circus artists all over the world. If you want to learn more, you can check out FedEx. I'll put a link in the description. This video, however, will be about ENC because that's where I went and I can tell you from personal experience how that was. So let's dive into it. Okay, so here we are, ENC. I graduated ENC in 2011, uh, but I was recently coaching there in January of 2020, and I think this information is still pretty up to date as far as I can tell. First thing to talk about is class size, meaning all of the students in a year. Typically, there's about 20 to 30 students per year, but you'll still have one-on-one -on -one coaching for the most part in your specialty with a coach. So compared to McGill, where I was sometimes two to 300 people in a room for one teacher, I thought this was awesome. ENC also has a high school program where you study and do circus uh, during the day. So if you're a little bit younger and that's interesting to you, maybe check that out on their website. Looking at your schedule, and these typically fluctuate between the three years, but it's more or less the same thing. 
you're going to have a major, a minor, and your core classes. So let's take a look at the core classes first, and then I'll talk more about my experience with a major and a minor. So the core classes are acro, flex, strengthening, dance, and acting, uh, which everyone is going to do during their time at school. Uh, acro, you'll probably have three hours a week. That's floor acrobatics and power track, uh, a mix of kind of gymnastics-based skills and more of a dance acro thing. Uh, flex, that's flexibility. Again, three times a week. They don't want people coming out with biscuits. Strengthening, that's what it sounds like, working out. Um, again, three times a week, and typically they'll give you a program that is designed to best help you for your specialty. For dance, we had ballet for the first two years, and then a combination of modern and contemporary jazz in the third year. So that's really helpful for learning choreographies and stuff, which you're gonna need down the road in your circus career. Okay, acting or improv, uh, or as they call it, jeu, which means play in French. That's uh, what it sounds like. It's gonna be a mix of different styles of acting and improv and mime and clown, and just getting you used to a lot of different ways of being on stage without circus props. And then finally, you've got your major, which for me was cigar box juggling, and your minor, which was Russian bar. Oh, is this the crash video from second year? <gasps> oh. <laughs> mm. You'll also have some other random classes scattered throughout the years, like uh, voice or singing, uh, music and rhythm, kind of body percussion, maybe a trampoline or a class. Uh, some of these classes that you request or that complement your discipline like trampoline for an acrobat and some that you don't that they think will just be good for everybody. <laughs> then at night you've got some other classes. I think you end up with a fine arts degree if I'm not mistaken. So looking here, English and the circus arts, philosophy, methods of research, French as a second language. I think I had a business type class in third year where they talk about taxes and contracts and websites and stuff like that. Um, and sometimes they'll have people coming in to teach classes from different companies on the outside. So the first thing you're going to want to notice is that this guy is there from 8.30 in the morning until 9 at night some days. Dang. So he's got about 40 hours a week of class, not including the time in between classes or the time spent traveling to and from school. So that's just an insane amount of training. And that's the first thing you want to think about if you're thinking about going to circus school. Um, because it's really hard to push yourself that much on your own if you think you can just do it on the side while you're studying, but you want to get to an elite circus level. That said, you're training around a bunch of fit, creative, passionate, open-minded people, which is really awesome. It's a ton of work if you think it's going to be work, or it's a ton of awesomeness if you think it's going to be awesome. Sometimes it's both. I say awesome so much. That was splendid. That was great. And that was just swell. Circus school tends to also give you a really nice breadth as opposed to training on your own. So while you go in with a thing that you were passionate about, in my case, cigar boxes, you're also gonna end up doing all of this other stuff that complements that and is helpful in a circus show. And in my case, I came out with a whole new discipline, Russian bar, that I love to do as well. Then you've got your major. In my case, that was cigar box juggling. I had two hours a day of that, so 10 hours a week. Uh, is that a lot or a little? Sometimes I would come in and do more on my own. Uh, sometimes it felt like too much and I wanted to stop juggling, but you're also paying them to kick your butt, so you get what you ask for. That's a lot of hours doing one thing, but the benefit of it is that it gives you time to just go down all of these different rabbit holes to try to find the stuff that really gets you excited and is unique to you that you can then bring to the world. So I was doing all this weird stuff. I would spend days just building castles out of cigar boxes, and then my coach would tell me to get back to work. Hmm. Okay, I'd say one of the best things, and maybe one of the hardest things also, is that you're just in this building, just stewing in the circus world for three years. <laughs> and so that can be a lot. Um, but the thing that I appreciate having finished and having worked professionally now for six or seven years is that you're never gonna have that time again to just focus on the tricks. And you can be tired because you don't have a show later at night. You can just work and work and work and really up your level. And it's really hard to find time to do that when you're trying to balance a job or work or, or other things when you're not 
just committing this time to that endeavor. One great thing about circus school is that you just get exposed to this giant network of circus people. And sometimes in the beginning, you don't really know who they are, and afterwards you'll be like, oh my gosh, that was that lady? And sometimes it's a company or a, a director that you really admire, or a circus artist that you just see in a bar with a boot on his head. And afterwards you're like, they're all humans, this is great. And it's a, a really great opportunity to just meet all these people on a human level and make connections and make friends with people without such a big separation of putting them on a pedestal. You know what's awesome? Friends. Friends are great, I love friends. It's snowing. Mm. In the circus school, you make some amazing friends. It goes without saying, everyone makes friends. People make friends all the time. But I made friends at circus school and <laughs> that made me happy. On the first day, we immediately started climbing all over each other, trying to make like ways to walk across the space with only so many feet touching the ground and stuff. Things that I had never done at McGill. And so it's just another level of bonding and hanging out. Intimate relationship. This, this sounds, this sounds like not what I'm trying to say. I mean, you make friends everywhere. I have lots of friends. I have so many friends. I love friends. But you meet these people and you make these bonds that just stay with you for so long. This sounds like, come to my college. I, I made friends. Friends. Now I mentioned those other circus schools at the beginning of the video because while all this stuff is important, I think there's three main things to consider. Friends. And the first one is facilities. For me, the, the circus school at Montreal was incredible. You know, I, I talked about Harry Potter earlier. It's because this place was like Hogwarts. I mean, it's got everything. It's got a circus library and two foam pits, a power track and trampolines. It has a physio if you get hurt. It has riggers. It has three giant studios, one of which, which was made in 2009, they called Studio 2009. If you need it, they've got a dance They've got a dance floor. They've got a dance room. What is it, dance floor? Dance floor, cafeteria. They've got a cafeteria. Now why is all this stuff important when you could do circus literally in your backyard if you're a juggler? Well, because you're gonna spend three years there getting good. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of hours. A lot of hours in the building. So having a facility that is at this level makes a difference. The second thing is the organization. And this is kind of, how is the school set up to best teach you circus? Or what is their vision of the best way to teach you circus? And so like I said, they're gonna push you a lot at ENC. You've got a lot of classes. You've got a big variety of classes. Uh, there's a real emphasis on specializing in your discipline. And I think these things are all great and I can't speak as much to how the other schools do it, but I did think ENC did this really well and it produces a lot of people um, that are gonna be really ready to work in a variety of different situations. Number three is of course the coaches. Now, it's hard to say because coaches change. Montreal is known for having a very high level of coach and that's really important to have a school that can attract that level of coach because that's gonna be the most important thing at the end of the day. I recommend that you talk to other people that have done your discipline recently at a school and to ask them what their experience was with those coaches because people are gonna have different opinions and each discipline is gonna have different coaches. So it's really important to get up-to-date information about that because the importance of coaching can't be overstated, especially in the discipline that you're the most excited about, the one you wanna go to school for, but also in the other secondary disciplines so that you're gonna be a well-rounded circus artist by the time you leave school. And I think it's worth noting that personally, while I didn't have a coach that was better than me at cigar boxes, because we weren't in Japan, I still got a lot out of the school and the coach helped me in structuring my practice, in thinking of different ways to be creative. Some of my coaches worked for the Seven Fingers, worked for Sir de Soleil, both in a coaching position, but also in a performing position so they could bring both of those experiences to the job. And that was just swell. The last thing I wanna say if you're thinking about going to a circus school is what do you wanna do with it? And the reason I say that is because you can work a lot of places that don't require you to be a good dancer or acrobat as well as a juggler or as well as a tissue artist. So it's worth thinking what you wanna get out of this experience and the things you wanna do after circus school, where you see yourself going. If you're interested in some of the different opportunities for circus artists out there, some of the jobs that I personally have done, drop me a comment and let me know and I'll make another video. 
Thanks for watching. Have fun circus school auditioning. Have fun circus school. Have have fun. Have fun circus school hunting. Have fun circus school hunting.